Hi everybody, this is a review for the uh, regions part of the review sheet on probability. And as you're going to see, there are a bunch of regions questions that are asked frequently. And the theme that seems to come up a lot is testing for independence. But I just listed a few formulas here. So the probability of A or B that equals the probability of A plus the probability of B. So when you see an OR, you should immediately be thinking add. When you see an AND, you should be thinking multiply. But when you do an OR, sometimes there are probabilities that sort of overlap. So you have to do the probability of A plus the probability of B minus anything that you already counted. So minus the probability of A and B. The probability of not A equals 1 minus the probability of A. I know Mr. Cornell already explained theoretical and empirical probability to you. Theoretical basically is a probability in theory of an event occurring. Like if you flip a coin, in theory you should get heads half the time and tails half the time. But an empirical probability, that's more of an experiment or a collection of data. You might do a survey of eye color, you might do a survey of hair color, what movies people like. So that's going to be anything that where you're collecting data or doing some sort of experiment. The probability of independent events. So one event has no effect on the other. If you roll a die or flip a coin, that should say coin right there. Uh, two events, A and B, are independent if the occurrence of one event has no effect on the probability of another event happening. An example is if you flip a coin two times, the probability of getting ahead the second time has nothing at all to do with what happened the first time. Dependent events, though, are um, they do have to do with what happened the first time. So like if I have two, picking two cards from a deck of cards and if I don't replace the first card. So say the probability of getting a jack is there are four jacks in the deck and there are 52 cards. So that's four out of 52. Now if I don't put the card back, the probability of the second card also being a jack is affected because now there's only three jacks left and there's only 51 cards left. So that would be an example of a dependent event. This is a thing that I was talking about that comes up on the regions I've seen, the product test for independence. So to test to see if two events are independent or not, you're going to take the probability of A and B, both of them happening, and set it equal to the probability of A times the probability of B separate. If these two things are equal, then they're independent. If they're not equal, then they are dependent. Conditional probability, that's the probability of an event A, given that in another event B has already occurred. So the probability, this is how it looks like, the probability of A given B has occurred. That equals the probability of A and B over the probability of B. Okay, so here are some um, questions. I think there's like seven or eight of them that you should have tried. Um, there'll be a hard copy of this, of these answers also. So if you want to check them that way, and then if there's something that you didn't understand, you can um, watch the video. The nice thing about the video is you can rewind it if there's something that you didn't quite get to go a little bit slower. You can fast forward it just to the questions that you got wrong. So I added up here the total number of females. So this is um, 200 students. So there's 200 students total male and female and preferred music style. So I just took all of these and added them up. There's 106 females. I took all of these different music styles for males and I added them up. There's 94. That gives me my 200 total. The techno, I added the females and the males. I added rap, I added females and males. Country, I added females and males together. And again, if you add these all up, that's 200. So for this group of students, does the data suggest that gender and preferred music styles are independent of each other? So that's the test for independence that was right here that I was talking about. So you're going to find the probability of both of them occurring and equals the probability of A times the probability of B. So test for independence. I want to find the probability if female and likes techno, I'm just picking you know, any of these music styles, I pick techno. So female and techno, there's 54 people out of 200. So that's the probability of female and techno. And I'm just testing it out to see it if equals the probability of female. Female total, I added all these up again, 106 out of 200 times the probability of all the people that like techno. And that was 90 over 200. So I put these into my calculator right there. And on the right, I got 0.2385, and 
and 54 divided by 200 on the left was 0.27. So those are not equal, so gender and music styles are not independent. Okay, and again, I just picked a music style. You could have tried to pick a different one and tested that out as well. As well. Okay, question two, guidance department reported that the junior class, 2.3% are members of the math club, and we're going to call the math club M. 8.6% uh, are enrolled in pre-calc, and we're going to call that P, and 1.9% are in both. So basically, the probability of M, I took that 2.3%, and I moved my decimal over two places, is 0 0.023. The probability of pre-calc was 8.6%. So again, I moved my decimal over two places, and it was 0 0.086. And the probability of M and P was 0 0.019, because it was 1.9. So I want to find the probability of P given M, so the probability of pre-calc given that they are in the math club. So the probability of P given M equals the probability of both, which was the 0 0.019, over the probability of M. So this second thing that it's dependent on is going into your denominator always. So 0 0.019 divided by 0 0.023 is 0 0.826. And I'm going to move that back to a percent because the question is, is asking me for the nearest tenth of a percent. So 82.6% of the people are in pre-calc given that they're in the math club. The principal would like a basic interpretation of what that means. So basically that means there's an 82.6% chance some member of the math club takes pre-calc. That's how I would interpret that. All right. Here's another regions question right here, similar to that first one we did. The totals are done for us though. So you can see uh, the results of the survey of a student body at Central High School about television viewing preferences. So I have 490 people total. Okay, the males are across the top, whether they like comedy, drama, or reality. And the females are in this middle row right here. And I also have my totals for each type of um, television preference. Are the events student is a male and student prefers, prefers reality series independent of each other? Justify your answer. So again, I'm testing for independence. So the probability of M and R, and I have to test to see if that equals the probability of M times the probability of R separately. So the probability of male and reality. So I come up to my chart here. Here's the male. And reality. I have 70 males that like reality. So the probability of male and reality is 70 over 490. The probability of male, the total males are 230. So 230 over 490 times the probability of reality. So reality is 180 over 490. So I put everything in the right in my calculator. I get 0.1724. I put uh, the left, 70 divided by 490, 0.1428. So since these are not equal, they are not independent events. Here's a multiple choice question. So just to look at some of these choices here, because I don't know if these came up in our lessons at all, but mutually exclusive means it can't happen at the same time. It, the best example would be a coin. If I flip a coin, I'm going to get heads or I'm going to get tails. I cannot get both heads and tails at the same time. They are mutually exclusive. Complement is sort of the um, all the other outcomes. So basically, if the complement is uh, if I have a die and I want to know the uh, probability of an even, the complement would be the probability of an odd number. So there are all the other odd comes. We sort of did that with the not. So I have Sean's baseball team. He pitches 50% of the games. So the probability he pitches is 0 0.50. There's a 40% chance of rain. So the probability of R is 0 0.40. The prob if the probability that rains given that Sean pitches is 40%, it can be concluded that these two events are. So basically, the probability that of um, rain given that he pitches equals the probability of pitching and rain over the probability of pitching. So I set up um, to test right here. So I have 0.40 
equals 0.5 times 0.4 over 0.5. And that was true, okay? So therefore, they, those are independent events. This one, I sort of made a Venn diagram, but I don't think you necessarily needed one for. So I have a high school has a population of 1,376 students. The number of students who participate in sports is 649. The number of students who participate in music is 433. The probability that a student produces in, uh, participates in either sports or music is 974. What is the probability that a student participates in both sports and music? So this is a case of you know the or. I know that if they participate in sports or music is 974. And the probability of an or equals the probability of each event added minus the probability of when they both happen because you have to subtract out that duplicates. So that's really what I'm looking for right here. I'm looking for the probability of both, both sports and music. So the probability of sports or music is 974. That equals the probability of sports, which is 649, plus the probability of music, which is 433, minus the probability of both sports and music. So I add these together, and I get 1,082, and I have 974. So I'm just going to uh, bring this over to this side, and I get negative 108 equals negative x, but then I just divide, uh, divide it by negative 1. So basically there's 108 over 1,376 because that's the total population. Okay, we got one more page. Um, this one's a little tricky right here. Given events A and B such that the probability of A equals 0.6, the probability of B equals 0.5, and the probability of A or B. So this right here is an or. A or B equals 0.8. Eight, we want to determine if these events are independent or dependent. In order to test to see if they're independent, I need to know the probability of A and B, and I don't have that right now. Okay, so I have to figure that out. So basically, I'm going to use the or, the probability of the or, to figure out what the probability of the and is. Remember, the probability of A or B equals the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. So this is going to be my x. This is what I don't know, and I need to figure that out before I test for independence over here. So I set this up because I do know the probability of A or B is 0.8. I know the probability of A. I know the probability of B. And I call this the probability of A and B. That's my X. That's what I'm trying to figure out. So I add 0.6 and 0.5 is 1.1. Again, I'm solving for X. So X is 0.3. So basically the probability of A and B is 0.3. Now I can test to see if it's independent or not. The probability of A and B is 0.3. Does it equal the probability of A, 0.6, times the probability of B, 0.5? Yes, it does. Therefore, they are independent. Okay, so that was one of the ones that actually came out to be independent. This was trickier, though, because, again, I didn't know the probability of A and B. I had to use it in a different formula to figure out what it was. All right, so this one right here was also a little tricky. I'm finding a lot of these regions questions a little tricky. I don't know if you guys did. Uh, in contract negotiations between a lo local government agency and its workers, it is estimated there is a 50% chance that an agreement will be reached on the salaries of the workers. There's a 70% chance there will be an agreement on the insurance benefits, and there's a 20% chance that there's no agreement will be reached on either issue. Okay, so the probability of salaries is 0.5 and the probability of insurance is 0.7. So I sort of made up like a little table here. I've got salaries and no salaries. So basically, are we agreeing on salaries or are we not agreeing on salaries? And the same thing for insurance. Are we agreeing on insurance or are we not agreeing on insurance? So all the numbers that I have circled, that was what was given to me in the information. So salaries, the agreeing on salaries is 0.5. That means they're not agreeing on salaries 0.5. Okay, so this I figured out. They are not agreeing on insurance. That was 0.20. And they are agreeing on, um, what was the 0.7? The 0.70 is um, 
point seven is they are agreeing on insur insurance and the point two oh sorry the point two oh is there's no chance of agreement on either issue so again everything circled was given to me in the original all right if they're agreeing on insurance point seven oh that means they're they're not agreeing point three oh this should be point uh, one right here not point one this should be one because the, the probability of something happening and not happening has to equal one if salaries was 0 0.50, then no salaries is 0 0.50. And again, 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 is 1. So it's either happening, the probability of something happening and not happening has to equal 1. So again, this is a 1 right here. Um, so then once I knew this was 0 0.5 and this was 0 0.2, I subtracted and this is 0 0.3. Once I knew that this was 0 0.3 and this was 0 0.2, I subtracted and this is 0 0.1. And therefore, 0 0.5 minus 0 0.1 this right here is 0.4. And they want us to know what's the probability an agreement will be reached on both issues, meaning salaries and insurance, and that is 0.4. Okay, so the easiest way to do that was with this little chart here. And then they want to know if, based on this, whether the agreement on salaries and the agreement on insurance are independent events or not. So I'm testing for independence. The probability of salaries and insurance does it equal them separately, the probability of salaries times the probability of insurance? So salaries and insurance, that's what I just found up here, 0 0.40. It equals the probability of salaries, 0 0.50, times the probability of insurance, 0 0.5 times 0.7 is 0.35. These are not equal, so they are not independent. Okay, uh, eight. The region likes to do this, and I can't stand these type of problems when they have these Roman numerals and they say one only, two only, one and three. But um, mutually exclusive, again, just to remind you, that means they can happen at the same time. That choice is automatically eliminated because if you read the problem, uh, Gary and Jane have a child with blue eyes. Is The probability is 0.25. The probability they have a child with blonde hair is 0.5. The probability that they have a child with both blue eyes and blonde hair is 0.125. Given this information, the events blue eyes and blonde hair, they are not mutually exclusive. Okay, They can happen at the same time, so I got rid of this. So basically, again, I am testing to see whether these are independent or not. Okay, um, To be independent, the occurrence of one event does not influence the occurrence of the, occurrence of the other event. So I'm looking right here. Um, I'm going to test for independence. So I do the probability of blue eyes and blonde hair, which was 0.125. And I want to see if it equals the probability of blue, which is 0.25, times the probability of blonde, which was 0.5. And when I multiply these, I get 0.125. So they are equal. Therefore, they are independent events. Okay? And that was it for this video.